That's the important thing. Hey, partner, you can't go back in there. It's too dangerous. Rosita! Oh, Rosita! Thank you. Thank God. I lost my dolly, Mama. The dog took me out. You didn't lose your dolly, little girl. Look at the dog he's got for you. The doggy. He's got my auntie. Would you believe it? I already survived and all that smoke. Jack! Come on, Jack, you can't do this to me. <laughs> Look, buddy, we've been together too many years, and I think you got bad lungs. Remember Sammy Evans? Why, well, he couldn't even put out a bonfire. Well, you give me some slack about Sammy Evans, Barney. He's got emphysema, he's pushing paper at the 42nd, washing the paint fade. I'm not gonna buy that wash about you not wanting a desk job. You got more medals than Napoleon anyway. Look, here, occlusion. Over there, occlusion. All over your lungs. Blockage. It's almost a 50% loss. Even shows up on your electrocardiogram. <laughs> it's emphysema, Jack. Your lungs have suffered so much damage, I, I wouldn't want you near a candle. What's the bottom line, Doctor? One more exposure to heavy smoke. One more blackout. Could be fatal, Jack. They're, uh... Putting me in mothballs. This letter's my walking paper, my epitaph. And if I take one of these pills, I become a patient forever. You mean Mallory gave you a clean bill of health with that cough? No problem. Just a touch of bronchitis. He gave me a few antibiotics, and I'm home free. You're one of my best men, Jack, but I hardly believe you're home free. Wait a minute, Jack. I want Walsh to work for Barney, not you. What is that? I want you outside the pumps.
Peter's club show. I'll see if I can get your workman's compensation. Not without wearing your mask, you don't. Neither of you. <laughs> you okay, pal? I gotta thank you. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have bought it in there. You know, now that I know you better, I realize you understand about that letter and everything. But I gotta ask you to cool it. I'm not giving up my career. They all say you're a real hero. But you're no hero to me, Jack. You risk that man's life, you risk your own life. Why'd you leave the hoses? Danford is not gonna be very happy. Danford doesn't have to know about it, Barney. He's gonna know. The other guys happen to notice. Oh, by the way, Walsh gave me these. He said the dog brought them to him. They're dated today. You don't exactly buy these over the counter, Jack. Uh, for my kidneys. I got a little trouble. Uh, I'm not gonna buy that. Now, what happened with Mallory? Did he give you a letter? What do you mean, letter? A letter to keep you off the trucks. You wouldn't be the first, you know. No, he never gave me any letter. Well, he should have. Have a good time with your kidneys, Jack. I'm in serious trouble, pal. One piece of paper's gonna change my whole life. Gotta think of something to tell Danford. Directly disobeyed your superior. Chief, it was dangerous up there. It was a job for a pro. I looked at Walsh, he seemed to hesitate. I, I was feeling good, so I went for it. Save it, Jack. I call the shots around here. 
Walsh is ready and I sent him in. Do you realize that you blacked out twice in one day? Now tell me about the doctor again. I told you everything about the doctor. Except I forgot to give you the letter. It was in my car. Why is this handwritten? Oh yeah, he uh, apologizes for that. His secretary was sick. Thorough examination of department personnel, Mr. Jack Thornton, indicates normal status. No I have prescribed mild sleeping sedative to relieve the bronchial distresses. Well, seems according to the book. Oh, is this the dog everybody's been talking about? Yeah. What's that? Oh, it's just a bill that was in my car. Yeah, he's quite the dog. <laughs> quite the animal. Will that be all, Chief? No, I'm afraid that won't be all, Jack. I'm going to supersede the doctor regardless of what he said. You've got a bad case of bad judgment, which I'm going to chalk up to exhaustion. But you leave me no choice. I'm going to suspend you for a week. I'll put in the report that it's to recover from bronchitis. Now, I want you to go back to the doctor and check this thing out again. Starting now, you have seven days off, Jack. And I don't want to see you till you're feeling better. Yes, sir. Well, oh, Jack. Just for insurance, I'll call Dr. Mallory and myself and make your appointment. Thanks, Chief. That's very thoughtful of you. Well, this is certainly a fine pickle we're in, isn't it? What are we gonna do? Where am I gonna start? I guess I better put myself in Dr. Mallory's hands. What am I talking to you for? Sometimes I think you're the problem, sometimes the solution. That's good work, Jack. He'd be glad you knew the Heimlich maneuver. Here. Uh, exhibit A, put it in the jar. All right. I was just thinking about you. Chief Danford called a few minutes ago. Danford? Yeah, it's a red letter day for you, Jack. You have the record. Come on, let's get this young fellow inside. No, I didn't talk to Chief Danford. He talked to my receptionist and left a message for me to call. Well, that's a first break in a streak of bad luck. Look, Doctor, I... I got a couple of problems I need your help with. I'm in a serious jam. Well, go on, Jack. I'm listening. Well, I didn't give your letter to the Chief. I... I, uh... I just couldn't face it. And? Well, he's concerned, even suspicious. My, uh, cough's pretty obvious. So he put me on the hoses, and I... I barged into a fire, blacked out, he found out, and now I'm suspended. But I can't change the diagnosis, Jack. I can't do anything else. I mean, it's all I know. I mean, I run into a burning building and haul people out. That, that's all I know. But that's not true. You just proved it. There's training. There's, there's public relations work. There's lots of things you can do. Not really. I don't have the education. I don't know anything else. All I know is firefighting. You've got more to offer than you realize. And you'd better find out what it is. Because if you don't change your mind and your job, you're going to die. Now, I'll call Chief Danford. I won't tell him about the letter. I'll tell him you're coming in for a more thorough examination and consultation with me. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. 
that's, 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 that's good. It'll be all right, Jack. We'll get you through it. Thanks. I'll see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. from the chief and a week from the doctor and when that wakes up i'm gonna be over this bronchitis and rested you'll see and when dr mallory examines me again he's gonna take that kiss off letter and shred it right now it stays in that glove compartment with those pills where they belong oh, i can't take those pills if i start taking those pills now i'll never stop <laughs> Chief Paul Danford from a doctor or something. <laughs> okay, I'll deliver it. Sorry, got no treats, pal. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't believe this. Okay. Let me check this out. Can you get me Fire Chief Danford? I recommend Mr. Thornton be retired from active firefighting immediately due to his chronic emphysema, signed Dr. E. Mallory. Does this mean anything, Chief? Officer, I haven't time to explain, but Jack could be in serious trouble. I think the dog wants me to follow him. Then go for it and stay on the radio. Believe me, you can trust that dog. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Hold on, I'm coming.
<laughs> you okay, Jack? Hi, Barney. Why am I always doing this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you'd want to join a club that has me as a member. Well, maybe he's as stubborn as you are, Jack. <laughs> Firefighter. I used to watch the old timers trying to be tough, disregarding regulations, stuff like that. I thought it was kind of foolish. I said to myself, I'd never be like that. And you know, I was wrong. I forgot. I'm just like those old timers. Long in the tooth, soft in the head. You know that, don't you? I want to thank you for not saying I told you so. I won't say that either. But I will say that you're pretty lucky to have a couple of fine partners, though. Well, looks like only one. I'm stuck with you again. Well, you won't need a partner teaching rescue and recovery procedures. Danford told me that if you survived this, you'd have a job as an instructor, Captain. <laughs> what do you think about that? You want to stick around and teach the canine corps? <laughs> okay, so go. So long, old smoke eater. I guess there are more old fire horses like me around you can help. Probably there are, partner. Probably there are. There's a voice that keeps on calling me Down the road, that's where I'll always be Every stop I make, I make a new friend can't stay for long, just turn around and I'm gone again. Maybe tomorrow I want to settle down. Until tomorrow, I'll just keep moving on. In Toronto, guests of The Littlest Hobo stay at the Ramada Renaissance, a very out-of-the-ordinary luxury hotel featuring non-luxury prices. Cars for the Littlest Hobo, supplied by Tilden. The only Canadian name in worldwide car rentals, Tilden features cars by Chrysler, like the Reliant. <laughs>